Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be working on my apple tree. Here is a look at my apple tree. This apple tree has undergone a lot of changes over the years. I had a lot of problems with dieback on it. The main trunk is kind of rotted out. So this is what I have. I've uh, grown this leader up the front to kind of replace the main leader of the tree in case that dies off. I've got some branches out the back. So the center of the trunk is pretty rotted. I've left all that organic matter in the middle of the tree, hoping that it grows roots from the surviving trunk into that organic matter to help kind of uh, fill in the center of the tree. Here is a look at the apple tree. So the main leader of the tree, half of it's rotted away. So there's kind of the shell, the living shell that's left. So structurally, it's not that strong. It's still, you know, alive and growing. So I've left all this organic matter in the middle, hoping roots develop into that soil or organic matter. You can see in some areas where it's rotted away that it's starting to heal around that area. Yeah, an interesting tree. The root base is quite nice on it. I will be repotting it this spring just to uh, change the soil and sort out the roots. So design-wise, it's uh, there's a lot of challenges, I guess. Uh, maybe the tree is just what it is. I just keep growing it, shaping the branches, and see what it turns into. Just kind of keep it as an interesting, spooky old tree. I do really like this tree. Um, apple trees in nature have a lot of dieback. You'll see main trunks rot away and the new shoots come up and the tree's always regenerating itself. So it's a very typical apple tree image for an ancient apple tree. And I, I like all the branch structure. It kind of looks, uh, as I said, very ancient and almost spooky looking. So I'm going to begin today by cleaning up the moss around the root base. The moss that's growing up around the roots is very interesting. I like it, but I do want to peel it away and see what I have. A lot of these surface roots are covered up. It needs weeding also. So I'll be doing that today. Yeah, it's a interesting tree. <laughs> There's all that dead section at the back there. And the tree is planted in a really nice pot. It's a Tokonomi pot from Japan. And it's just a beautiful old pot. Here is a look at the pot. It's a beautiful pot. I was very lucky to get it. Um, the person who brought it from Japan said they had no tree large enough to go in this pot. And they thought of me and my apple tree. And uh, yeah, they sold it to me at a very, very reasonable price. So I just love this pot. It's fantastic. It will be very interesting in spring to see what the root system looks like on this tree. Originally it had a really nice radial root system and then I started getting some kind of disease on the tree or issues where I got big strips of the live vein dying back and it, it happened over many many years and lately it's stabilized in the last kind of maybe five years. I haven't had any sections of the tree die off, which is good. And hopefully my luck will continue. I don't know if it was like apple rust or what it was on the tree, but whole sections of the tree would just suddenly go mushy and just die off. And it was very, it was very sad. I, uh, you know, this tree had a beautiful trunk on it and it was developing well. And, and then it turned into a half dead tree and I kind of 
well, it, w it was hard to take. But, so I've just kind of kept it alive and let it develop itself to see what it turns into. And it's starting to recover and looking quite nice now. Sometimes die back on a tree, I mean, it's hard to take it first, but eventually, as the tree recovers, it can add a lot of character to the tree. Dead sections and... So you just have to accept, you know, what you get and continue developing the tree, working with what's left and hopefully it'll uh, get better. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes, you know, the tree is too far gone and it's just, you can't really save it. But hopefully I can make something nice out of this tree. Well, it looks nice now. I think um, I'll just keep refining it and see what it develops into. So it's been a long time since I repotted this tree. I would say, I'm trying to think, I think I've repotted it on the channel, but I think it's been close to eight years. On the trunk here, you can see that there are roots growing into this organic matter in the middle. There's a lot of fine roots in there. So I want to continue that. So hopefully, you know, this whole middle section will fill up with roots eventually, kind of filling in that dead spot on the trunk. I'll continue cleaning up the root base, weeding the tree, and then we'll come back and see what it's looking like. Here is a look at all the weeds and moss I took off the roots and the trunk. Quite a pile. So let's have a look at the tree and the root base now. So there is a look at the roots, the living tissue of the tree. Now if I go around the back here, so you can see all the nice radial roots there, they're looking good. But the back has this whole dead section here. This dead section is very soft. You know, it's like a sponge. Um, so I have two possibilities. I could, you can see there are some roots forming in that dead organic matter. I could dig it all out and just leave the living tissue. You know, this is all just spongy rotted wood here. I could dig it all out or I could just leave it and see what happens with the roots if they start growing into this section. My only concern is that I could get like insects in there, which I don't think they would harm the living part of the tree. They'd just be eating the decaying matter in there. So I, yeah, I, I don't know what to do if I should take it out or just leave it. I think I'm just going to leave it. It's not doing any harm, at least I don't know of any harm it's doing. So, as I said, I might get more roots growing in that middle space. If I dig it all out, I've got kind of like, I don't know. It would still be an interesting tree, but I think I better leave it. Maybe the best thing to do is wait till I'm repotting the tree in spring and see what it's like if that middle section comes out easily. I could dig it out, replace it with bonsai soil. That might be a good thing to do and some fresh moss around it to encourage the roots to grow into it. I just, if there are roots growing in there, I don't really want to disturb them because there's a lot of fine roots that I can see on the outer part of it. And if I disturb them, they may dry up and I may lose those roots. So. For now, I'm going to leave it, and in spring when I repot the tree, maybe I'll think about it again. So next, I'm going to prune up the tree, just kind of cutting it back, getting 
it compact and sorting out the structure. I think part of the charm of this tree is that tangled kind of look to the branches. And I, I don't really want to, you know, restructure it into a formal looking tree. I think that's the charm of this tree is it looks like a, a spooky tree because it's all tangled and there's no formal structure or rules applied to the tree. I will shorten it back like all these whippy shoots I'll shorten back but I think I think the structure I'm going to just leave it wild like that. I think if I try and tame this tree I'm taking away that wild quality that makes it interesting. So that's my thoughts on the tree. So I'm just going to make it a little more compact. All right, here I go. So I am going to start with this long shoot out here. It's not too bad. It's kind of comes out straight and then it's got an interesting curve here. So I'll keep that and I'll just prune it back to here. This shoot here beside it. I've got a butt on the top. I got one on the bottom, one at the side. I've already cut it back, so I think I'll just take the dead bit off the tip. Leave it at that. I did do some pruning on this tree because it was taking up a lot of space. You can see these branches are being cut back. I can clean up this stub here. This one. I've got some branches out the back here that I can prune. It's pretty straight looking. Um, I had a butt here on the top and then there's one on the bottom there. I think I'll prune back to that. Like that. This one's already being pruned. I can prune this one back to here. There's one coming out the top here. It's getting a little long. I'm going to cut that back. There's a few stubs I can clean up up top here. One on the apex here. One here. Another one here. Here. Lots of stubs. This branch could be pruned back a bit more. And maybe this one too. This one's getting very long here. I'll take this stub off and then I'll prune it back. I've got a one facing forward a bud and one facing back, so I'll take it just ahead of that. I think this one's still too long. I'm going to take it back a bit. And this one back to here. Okay, I've got a shoot here I could reduce. This one could be cut back a bit more. And this one. Got some stubs I can clean up. Stub clean up here. Certainly, is. I think this one's too long. I, I think I've got to take it back further. There's a stub here, and then I'll take it back to here. There 
There's a stub here. Stub here. Here. Here's one I pruned back and sealed with the rubber cement. It's healing over really nicely. I think that's going to be it for the pruning. stub here I can take out and here and here <laughs> lots of stubs and here here and the end of this branch can be taken back Not this one Some stubs to take off. There's one here. And one here. Checking to see if I missed any. I'm sure there will be one I miss. Maybe even two. I'm just thinking here, I, I've got these two branches kind of growing right beside each other. I'm going to take one off. And which one do I keep? I think I'll keep that long, whippy one and remove the thicker one. It's always better to have thinner branches. Like that. I think that whippy one's still a little long. I'm going to take it back to here. That looks better. And this one coming out the front's a little long. I'll take that back. Yeah, so there's... You know, a bit of a pruning to it, cleaning up the stubs. Still got all its character. Let's step back and have a look at it. Here is what I took off the tree today. This is maybe the most pathetic carnage cam ever. Yeah, so not a whole lot, just some tips and some stubs. I'm stepping back now, having a look at the tree, and I see a bit of a conflict between this trunk and the one behind it. They kind of converge in the middle and it doesn't look so good. So I have two choices. I can prune this one off to here, keeping my branches kind of flowing out in the middle. Well, I think that's my only choice. The other choice is, you know, maybe this will rot away someday or crack off and die and this will be what I'm left with. So, But I think even if this pack, back part were gone, I, I still think the way it kind of crosses, it'd be better to flow outward. So I'm going to take the top off, this branch. So here I go. Now, where am I going to take it off? I think... I want everything flowing outwards, but I do want something coming forward. I'll take it off here and see what happens. I can always reduce it back later if I get some good buds coming out here. Now, how does that look? So that looks better. It's a little more flowing. There's not that conflict. I also... This kind of bothers me. I've got this branch kind of crossing this one. I'm going to take it back. I've got a bud in there. So I'll take the top off that. I think that helps too. I think the rest, like this is just like a confusing mess of spaghetti and I think I like that. 
Yeah, so I, I think that's it. I'll rotate the tree around so you can see it from all angles. So this is the current front coming around to the right hand side. Coming around to the back. That's an interesting view, this one. It's nice this comes forward. You know, that may be the whole tree someday is this one, that section there. So coming around to the back here, uh, coming around to the left hand side. And back to the front. Yeah, so I, I'm thinking, you know, in the future, if this all rots away, there's still a good apple tree at the back here that I can use. It's very highly tapered and, yeah, interesting. So I will seal all these cuts up with rubber cement. So these fruit trees, you cannot put them in the ground for the winter because they must taste delicious because it's the first thing rabbits will chew on. Rabbits, squirrels, they must be sweet tasting. So you've got to protect them in the winter, either in a cold frame or a greenhouse or somewhere. You've got to keep them cool for the winter. And safe from rodents, mice, everything will eat these trees. And that goes, there's a lot of trees that are very sweet tasting. Uh, maples, most of the fruit trees will get chewed on. The only trees that don't get chewed on are the bad tasting ones like, uh, I don't know, maybe spruce or something like that. But even those, they will get eaten. I've had spruce trees in the front that have been chewed on by rabbits. Yeah, I guess in the middle of winter when there's no food, they'll pretty well eat anything. So it's best to protect your trees over winter if you can. This rubber cement's a little stringy, but it works good as a cut paste. I really like it. And it's very inexpensive. One of these tubes cost me 99 cents and it lasts a long time and it dries quickly okay I think I've got all the cuts sealed up now so far I've never had the tree come into flower uh, I did leave it unpruned one year to see if it would flower and there were no flowers on it. So maybe someday in spring it'll be covered in flowers. That would be quite a sight. So that is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>